Welcome to the space where creators have aligned a positive and intellectual collab of open minds. For sharing and learning from one another, it's a vibe. We give us a podcast on the mic. Subscribe, educators, spitting bars. I guess you didn't know I'm multifaceted and humble, taking off life goals. The classroom is my comfort zone where I plant and sow. Seeds of knowledge, compassion, empathy, and hope. Reading is the key to unlocking your potential. Countless benefits, including positive and mental. Regardless of the genre, books are highly influential. Go get yours, I'll get mine. Make you strive. Money mental. Come rock with me and get down to this new jam. Yeah. 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 my friends, I had a very simple plan. Educate the masses through books and life lessons. It's a grand slam. I'm out. Talo falava, malo elele, fakalo falahiatu, and welcome to the Reads with Russell podcast. As you can tell, I'm just a little bit excited today, fam. We've had quite a few educators on the show who've shared their journey in the classroom. And today, I'm really excited to introduce our guest because she is bringing another important perspective to what a classroom can look like. She's a middle school teacher, a blogger, and a mother who will be sharing her perspective on homeschooling. It is my honor to welcome to the show Elizabeth Angemotu, founder and owner of Inventus Learning. Woohoo! <laughs> welcome, Hi. sis. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you, Rosa, so much for having me. I, I'm so honored to be here. It's an honor to have you. How are you? How are things in your part of the world? They are great. We are transitioning to winter, so life is good, getting ready for cold weather <laughs> but yeah are you in a part of the u.s that is extremely cold you get a lot of snow and things like that um we're, i'm in seattle so uh, mm. we do get snow in the winter but not like some of the other states so we mm. expect it each year but but not like you know the east coast or utah or some of the other states i see i see well uh before we get into it i like to ask our guests just to uh, give a brief intro shout out your people your villages uh go ahead yeah, so I I am like you mentioned. I am from. I live in Seattle. My mother is Anne Manako Iko Fo'o Talahiva Kenohoi Vekune, and she's from Nukualofa Tonga. My father is William John Phillips, and he is from New York City. Um, and here I am in Seattle. <laughs> here you are in Seattle, and yeah, thank you so much for your introduction. Uh, where should we begin, Elizabeth? Because as I mentioned, you are an educator, you are a blogger, and Inventus Learning. I am so curious. Um, so hey, let's begin at the be- Let's go right back to the start. Education. When did you know that you were going to be a teacher? Yeah, um, actually, my grandmother on my father's side, um, she was a teacher in New York City. Uh, so growing up, she lived with us. Um, and so that was an experience that I had um, just firsthand as she put into her teaching practices in our home, um, teaching us how to read, how to write. Uh, and so she inspired me in lots of different ways. Um, and it was something I considered. And then I went through a period where I was like, that is not, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do something totally different. Uh, and I think as I got older, I finished college, traveled a bit. Um, I came back and I just realized I still love it. I still love mm. to be with children. I love teaching them. Uh, and so that kind of started the journey to go back to school again, to get my master's and go into, I started in elementary and then mm. went into middle school from there. Wow. And in terms of specialist subjects, were you like perhaps like a specialist in math or generally because you went through elementary and middle school, it was all different subjects yeah so um in my undergrad degree was in English literature so I ended up focusing in reading and writing um in the arts there but I um I specialized actually in special education so um Mm. my students were students who had um just a variety of different special needs uh, but I still taught those subjects to them so Mm. in terms of culture and identity um growing up in the U.S., where were you able to access, um, you know, your Tongan heritage, your roots? Uh, were you around other family or, you know, were you far away from communities or was it through church? Where were you able to kind of like uh, stay connected to just family and culture? Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, my father's mom, she lived with us, um, but then that was really the only family I knew on my father's side. Actually, my mom's, uh, my grandma and her brother both lived with us. 
uh, growing up. But on my father's side, we didn't really have any other family that we knew. Most of them were first generation. And so a lot of them lived abroad. Um, and so on my mother's side, that was really our, the only culture I really knew growing up. Um, mm. And we did, we stayed very connected. Um, even though most of our immediate family, uh, we have like second and third cousins here in Seattle. Our, all of our first cousins lived in New Zealand or back in the island. Oh. Um, uh, and so we really did spend a lot of time traveling back back home to see family. Um, we, we, um, it was kind of a blend just because of my father's side and then my mom too. But I feel like our family here in the US, our closest family was in San Francisco. So I would say maybe like once a month, <laughs> it felt mm -hmm. like we were always there, um, always going to family events and seeing our cousins. So even though we didn't, we weren't raised down the street with them, I, I still mm -hmm. felt like we were very much raised with them. Um, like they were siblings to us. Wow. And you, you mentioned New Zealand. Have you mm -hmm. been to New Zealand? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm from New Zealand. So oh, okay, just, yeah. okay, okay. I was just thinking, I thought so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. My mom's, uh, a couple of her siblings still live in New Zealand. Wow. And then obviously we have a lot of other extended family too. So that's so cool. And you've, cool. you've, because you've traveled a lot, were you able to go back to the islands? I mean, have you been mm -hmm. to, or? Yeah, we went, That's... we went often as little, I feel like we went more as little kids. And then obviously, yeah. as we got older, um, we have a, a trip we've had planned since 2020. But you know, the whole world <laughs> shut mm. down. So, um, but yeah, we did go often um, growing up and just got to see our, our grandparents and our um, first cousins and my mom's siblings. That's so cool. And in terms of, you know, you're a mother, uh, you have a family, how have you been able to incorporate those experiences just into the lives of your own uh, young family now like uh, you know the whole it's just staying connected or even just building your own family traditions or travel traditions yeah I um, <clears throat> I love traveling it is I think one of my favorite my one of my most I don't know the biggest passions that I have right. because I feel like we learn so much um, from from travel anywhere you know local or even international um, so I always tell the kids that that's actually one of the biggest reasons why I went into homeschooling was I wanted to have the flexibility to be able to travel and not have the restriction of a regular school schedule um, and hopefully do, you know, more than just like once or twice a year, but to go see family, to go see, you know, the historical places we learn about in books in person instead of just just reading it through the eyes of a book. <laughs> not that those are not that. bad, but, you know. <laughs> I love that so much. And I was wondering when I was researching about you I was I think we've actually been following each other for quite a while but I've always been curious like knowing that you uh you know you did your studies and then you were in education for quite a while like at what point did you decide hey you know what we're going let, let's do homeschool and let's move into just a this is another path this is another classroom <laughs> How did, how easy was it to make that decision as an educator? Yeah, um, I think growing up, homeschooling was not very common. Um, mm. And I definitely had the stigma that everybody else had about people who homeschooled was kind of like, right. they're a little bit strange, you know, <laughs> or like they have, <laughs> they're a little bit odd. Um, but it, it wasn't common and I didn't see it. I didn't go to, I, I went to public school and then eventually later to private school. So I didn't have any experience firsthand. Um but I think seeing in the classroom, the longer I taught, there were certain things that I struggled with that I was like, well, I, I wish there wasn't so much red tape around this. I wish I had, mm. you know, more flexibility to teach in a different way. Um, and I didn't actually make the jump. My sister, who's a, just a tiny bit older than me, she had kids a couple years before me. And so she actually was homeschooling. And so she just mentioned to me, like, some of the ideas that she had. And she was like, sending me videos like look at the, these people who homeschooled when they were children and they're adults now and so it kind of opened up my eyes to see some other ideas and then I didn't realize how big especially in Seattle how big the homeschooling community is it's enormous um, for wow. lots of different reasons I mean there's people who are homeschooling for religious reasons people who are homeschooling for um, you know medical reasons for their children some because they have um, schedules that don't fit with the traditional school um, and a lot of it, some just for the um, idea of having flexibility to learn in a different way than the way that the classroom is structured. So 
Mm. It was kind of gradual. And I, I, I kept saying, I don't, I'm not going to promise anything. And then as our oldest got closer and closer to being school age, I was like, okay, I will try it and then see, you know, if it wow. works out. That is awesome. And so let's, while we're here, let's get into Inventus Learning. Like when did you put a name to, uh, yeah, to to what you're, the education that you're providing in the home. When did you put that name to it? Yeah, um, I think I, I, as I was exploring, and like I said, it, I was already a little hesitant my first year. I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, we'll just see, take it year by year. Um, but I realized the longer I've been in in this environment homeschooling i i i realize i'm learning just as much as my kids are you know i'm trying to figure out like i'm trying to learn about them and their learning styles and learn about um what's the best way to help them grasp um new information and you know have real tangible experiences um and so it was kind of just natural i feel like i just thought i might as well blog about this <laughs> i might yes. as well talk about what i'm doing here and so it just it just kind of came over time. I was, um, my original plan actually, when I had my son, my first son, um, it was to go back to teaching. So I thought I'm going to continue teaching. Uh, and it was a last minute, I think a week before school started that I told my principal, I wasn't going to come back and it, I feel bad for him now, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, that was not the best timing, but I just wasn't in a good space to, mm. to feel prepared to do the, the commute and then come back home and care for a baby and so um yeah I feel like that turned into because we hadn't planned for me to just stop full-time working it turned into like all these years now of just figuring out like what can I do in the space of my schedule in the space of my children and still find fulfillment and still be able mm. to share you know in a different way so what's been um one of the biggest takeaways from that shift, I guess what people would say the traditional classroom to being in the home. And like you said, you know, just so many different experiences that you're now offering your children, not say I, I, I too am a teacher, so I'm yeah. not saying being in the classroom is bad, but it's so cool to hear just such a different perspective and being like, Hey, here the classroom looks like this so what has been a big takeaway for you thus far in the in the journey of inventors learning yeah um I would say I think my first year I tried to replicate the classroom at home because it was just mm. what I knew and how I knew how to structure the day so I I think about it now and I laugh I had like a board I mean, he was only five years old when he was the only student, but I had seven subjects and times that we're going like to go through. Time table. <laughs> it was so intense. <laughs> I think I lasted one week. And at the end of the week, I was like, this is, I'm, I'm tired. He doesn't yeah. care. This is, like, this is not working. And then I think the more that I learned from other people who hadn't been homeschooling, um, and especially from other educators, people had said the mm -hmm. same thing that resonated with me. Like, it's really hard to get out of this framework of like this is how students should learn and they should learn right. in this order and they should sit down at the table and learn and then they should write their math you know and um I think one of my biggest takeaways is trying to remember that in as adults we don't I mean yes we learn sometimes by studying and you know being at a table but we really learn from experiences and we learn from you know reading books we're interested in and we, we learn from like uh, writing on our bed, you know, we're not at a table mm -hmm. or we just do things with so much more flexibility that I am trying to remember that all the time, like get out of the framework of like, even the language of learning, like, right. um, the idea of like having to be at a certain level or, you know, um, knowing what you should know for second grade it's like right I've, it's really hard, but I feel like that's teacher talk, exactly. Right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's pretty tight. Like the, it's, can be confining and it's hard mm. um, that I feel like that's my biggest takeaway that I'm always working on is to get out of that um, idea of like they sh they're they seven so they should know this and this and this and they should learn it this way um, mm. and give them more flexibility to really learn in a way that's more meaningful and hopefully that sticks with them you know I think about what I remember from school and I don't remember a lot I mean there's p part parts that I remember but I think they're, the reason why I didn't remember some of the things is I didn't feel a personal connection to them or yeah. maybe I didn't learn them in a way that that was best fit for me. And so mm. 
I'm trying to make room for that, but it's a daily process. <laughs> yeah, I, I really love how you said that uh, when you just spoke about I don't remember a lot because it really got me thinking about, yeah, I don't remember a lot, but I can tell you what I do remember is the teacher who cared. And what I mean mm -hmm. is who cared enough to say my name correctly or to pronounce my name correctly the teacher who asked how are you uh, even if I was sitting at the back of the class uh, those are the things I remember not so much the content or you know obviously I loved English that mm -hmm. was the class I paid attention in because it was the way the teacher delivered the the novel or the content right that got me hyped but now you you said that and I was like you know what that's so true that's so true of a traditional classroom of a typical classroom you know we're really many you hear many experiences just bound by those walls right a classroom mm -hmm. does not have to be these four walls mm -hmm. and I did want to ask you because on my notes I have describe a typical daily schedule and I'm <laughs> sitting here listening to you going yeah, I don't know that typical is the word. I don't know if I should be using that while I'm talking to Elizabeth oh, no. from Inventus Learning. So, so take us through, um, yeah, take us through a day with, with you know, school at home with your kids. Like, take us through a day of, sure. learn, day of learning. <laughs> no, I think the question is totally legitimate. And I think it's a good question because I think some people avoid homeschooling because it sounds... Mm too unstructured it sounds like mm. I need some boundaries you know so I I mm. think it's a good question it made sense <laughs> um a typical day in our I feel like I said like each year and kind of honestly throughout the year we're forever changing but if it's the most recent day I will tell you this <laughs> so mm. um a typical day we normally try to wake up and breakfast is like I try to utilize breakfast while we're doing something like I'm either reading to them or we're talking about something um so while they're just sitting around <laughs> this is the one thing with homeschooling is that they eat non-stop it's like <laughs> it is we I feel like every day is they've eaten three breakfasts and they finish the first one and they're like well what else are we having I'm like what in the world this come is on mom yes. come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like how do we get anything done I've just been sitting here making food after food but um they with the access to a kitchen you know this is the fun <laughs> of never having to have lunch time at a certain time mm. um yeah so we wake up and then they have uh they eat their breakfast and then normally right now we I try to do a morning time with them. Um, they're learning Spanish uh, right now. Mm -hmm. So I do morning time in Spanish with them. So it is normally like they will recite um, or practice something from memory, like a poem or um, a song. Uh, what else have they done? They've done, yeah, m most of them are poems from just different parts of the world. Um, and then after that, we do some like just little flashcards for vocabulary because one of them will just pick them up and they just lead each other so it's kind of like student-led and they enjoy it mm -hmm. um and then recently we've been for morning time yeah so normally in Spanish and then um then they go into so this is my first year just having more structure actually in the previous years my kids have been younger and I feel like I'm I think my personality is like well let's go with the flow we'll see how it goes and then this year I was like I have a fifth grader <laughs> I have to like really feel like I I'm giving him all that he needs you know as he's his needs are increasing so uh I I kind of scheduled out the day to kind of balance what subjects the kids need more attention with with the other kids needing maybe less attention uh mm -hmm. so the, I help my youngest one who's learning how to read uh or my my third one who's learning how to read and then the other two work on spelling and some kind of like uh phonics type work that's less intensive for me to have to help them and then we move on and uh one one child works on math and then the other one works on spanish the spanish is like a curriculum that has like um it has some audio connected to reading and so it's a little less hands-on for me uh and math, I don't know, for all of the kids, I feel like you let you leave them for a second and they fall apart. Like they don't get something and <laughs> that someone's crying, you know, it's like, oh gosh. <laughs> so I feel like for each of them, I plan math. Like I'm going to sit right next to you and help you with mm. it so you don't get frustrated. Um, and then we normally try and take a break. I, I That's another one of the biggest things. I, I So our first three uh, kids are boys. 
Um, mm. And I, and then our last one is a girl and they all have enough energy for like a hundred people. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they are never tired. They're always just bouncing off the wall, trying to do something. So we always try and get a lot of time outside. That's, a, <clears throat> that was one of the biggest reasons too, for wanting to stay with homeschooling was to spend mm -hmm. as much time as we could just outdoors. Um, so yeah, we take a little break and then we come back in and then we try and, and finish. We'll do history where we, uh, a lot of times we were just reading from, from authors from like a particular time period. Um, and then uh, they have writing and that's our day. We, we try and finish. I mean, we finished long before the other kids come home from school. So then the rest of the day is just go outside and play. Right. And is there a set time? Uh, you know, do you, yeah, is there a set time, like some days perhaps shorter, a little bit more flexible while others you're like, okay, these we have to get through today. We're going from nine to, you know, how, how do you, yeah navigate that <laughs> yeah okay I, I think it's just based on my kids and also where they're mm. at so I feel like they've gone through seasons where they sleep in and I feel like I'm mm. with sleep I'm like don't touch them like let them sleep until they are ready to wake up because yeah they will be happy and I will be happy and our day will go better so we normally start like around nine because by then everybody's awake and um and then our goal is to try and finish by one because I, our youngest one still, she still naps. And so mm -hmm. I just try and plan around her, her nap. And so I'm like, if we can finish by the time she needs to take a nap then the other kids can go play outside and she can rest. So I've, I, all of the years we've structured it around the youngest one because they're the most needy, you know, as far as like mm -hmm. napping. That makes sense. And, yeah. That makes sense. Um, I, I wanted yeah. to, yeah. I mean, I wanted to ask you about the boundaries, like, uh, how do you set boundaries in terms of um, not too many rules, but, you know, everything, I mean, trying to allow for teachable moments, but also we are setting boundaries here in terms of uh, discipline, in terms of the learning, in terms of the, the life skill component of the learning. Like, yeah, how do you set boundaries yeah, so <laughs> this is um, Elizabeth, the, the the mom, but educator as well, like, so that your kids, you know, understand there, it's, there are rules in place, but we're flexible, if, if I can say it like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. It's making me think, like, I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. I, it is mm. like a work in progress every day because right. I feel like as I'm growing the kids are also growing so I feel like their attention their um their mm. hormones start to kick in and I'm like realizing it with my oldest one like wow this is a different school year because you have a lot bigger emotions than you did you know previously in the last year um I try to actually I heard this I don't know some encouragement somewhere I don't remember where but it was like the idea that to try and say yes more. Uh, and I'm realizing that maybe I, I say no a lot and it mm. can feel, I've had this voice by my children that I feel, they feel like I'm always saying no. I'm saying no here, mm. I'm saying no here. And I was like thinking about it. I think it's hard because when you're with them all day, you are the teacher, you're the mother, you're, you know, the everything. Your voice is constant. Um, I mean, I try to tell them, I, maybe in my frustrated moments, like you guys, you know, I, I am here because I want to be here. I want to do this with you guys. But if you don't want to do it on days, like, just say that if you don't want to mm -hmm. be here, if you're like, you don't want to learn from me, I've always tried to keep the door open. If you feel like this isn't working well. Um, and like I say, I think I say it more when I'm frustrated. <laughs> if you think this <laughs> isn't working, tell me and I will stop, you know, mm -hmm. or we let's do something different. Um, but they're pretty open with me. I think, mm -hmm. I talk a lot to them. And so I feel like in return, they talk a lot back to share mm -hmm. their feelings. Um, so boundaries, it's really just like respect their time. You know, I'm here because I want to be here with you. There's mm -hmm. other options for school. So if you don't like it and you don't think it's working or you want to be disrespectful, then, then let's not do it. <laughs> um, You're going back to that classroom. Just kidding. <laughs> you got now, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a threat that I've used and then I like regret it after. I was like, oh, why? <laughs> why did I say that? Who says mm. that? 
That's, yeah, I mean, they've never been in a classroom, which is funny. So I'm like, I don't know where they're going back to. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Going somewhere. (laughs) And and so I was wondering, um, you know, in partnership, um, what role does your husband play in this? Um, was he the, they're like, oh, dad's home, the good parents here. And there's mom, she's so, you know, like how do you uh, kind of like find that balance and what's his role aside from being dad yeah. in, in the whole education part of their lives, the learning? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's an ongoing conversation I have with him and um, that we have together of like how, what role do you want to play in, um, and they do. They they always think he's like way more fun. Like, oh, he's home. We're gonna go play football. You know, it's like, okay, it's fine. I'm not offended. It's okay. Go, go play. Um, but yeah, I I feel like he does a lot to help me. Um, and he supports a lot. Like in the uh, in the mor- in my morning schedule, I normally like try and do things for myself before the school day starts. So before nine o'clock, I normally leave the house and go to the gym and then go and do some work at like a coffee shop for a couple hours alone. Um, and then he helps support me just like by getting the kids ready by, um, I told him, I was like, teach them whatever you want. Like I know for me, like history is my passion. So I think, I think we have the most fun when we're doing history, but you teach them like what is pa- what you're passionate about because we've had this before where the kids he's done math or some some other subject with him and then they're like well dad did it in a different way you know or and you didn't do it like that and then we told dad and I'm like oh my gosh this is yes the kids like you know and I'm like you just pick whatever so um he loves doing hands-on stuff with them um he loves taking them out places uh I feel like he does a lot less like um, he, he loves to read to them. So he reads a lot of times before bed um, with them uh, in the morning time. Sometimes he'll do reading um, before he goes to work and we swap and kind of do that morning swap. But um, I would say I definitely take a heavier load of the schooling. Um, and I'm, I think it's mainly my choice. Like, like I said, I was like, guys, let's not have back and forth conversations about who yeah. taught math in a different way. Like, I'll just teach you math. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yes, I think I think he's has been a huge support to me and has always encouraged me, like, you know, take breaks when you need to. Or mm. even on the days where I'm like, we didn't do anything, you know, or I feel like mm. we didn't accomplish like half of what I wanted. Um, right. He's really encouraging and just said, like, it's okay, you know like right. you have tomorrow you try again like during his hours where he's at work um but I would say I, I take more of that like actual instructional role um mm. and he's more of the like hands-on experience um you know do something fun outside <laughs> 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 I wanted to ask you about um out school educator library out school educator library is that can you talk about that because I think I saw it on your one of the blog I think I saw it on your website like is that that yeah what is that like yeah is it books bringing books into the home is it a is it a you can get resources from there like yeah yeah so out school is an online platform that teaches uh, essentially their classes so Mm. um, you can they've expanded it a lot since I first started but uh, they offer classes um, to anybody most of them are age excuse me specific um, I feel like during the pandemic, they blew up because there were so many kids uh. at home. Um, and so they went from kind of small setting classrooms to like the, um, what's it called, where uh, the instructor isn't interacting with the students. It was more like a lecture style, uh, mainly uh. to accommodate because there were so many kids joining. Uh, but you essentially pay for, for classes in specific areas. Um, and there's homeschoolers who I think a lot of them utilize it. But there's also other um, students who maybe their parents just like they need them to have a little more instruction on, let's say, reading. And so Uh, then they can pick through classes that are offered by um, instructors. And for the instructor side, the cool thing is you don't have to be uh, a certified teacher. Uh, Mm. You just have to have a college education. But Mm. you essentially like pitch to them what you want to teach and how you're going to structure the class. So for an income uh, an income stream, it's great for people who are wanting to find a way to earn um, a little extra income teaching something that they're mm. passionate about. So there's classes that are very like, you know, learn how to structure a paragraph. And then there's like 
beekeeping classes there's yoga i mean wow. there's like any class yeah you can think wow so and languages so we've utilized it for um for like an immersion spanish class we've utilized it for different oh, areas when i, I felt like i had resistance with some of the kids over a certain area um mm. i'm like let's just try and have a different voice you know for and and some of them are weeks long and some of them are just like a one-time class so it's very flexible to kind of like uh, supplement any of your education that you already have. Interesting. And then books in the home, uh, you know, you've mentioned reading, you come from a reading writing. I mean, you know, you've done the study part of it, like reading in the home, books in the home. Uh, you can't, do you visit the public library? Do you have books like, man, do you have a large library in your house? <laughs> I feel like I'm like, oh, I, as I never realized, I remember I was, what was it? Um, someone was, I think, selling, selling books. And, and every time someone is like, oh, I have these books. Here's a big bundle. I'm like, I'll take them all, you know, yeah, like I want yeah. them all. I don't even know if we'll read them all. But I remember a friend was like, oh, I don't have room for it. And I was thinking like, what? Like, who doesn't have room for books? You know, like, you just make room. <laughs> but, but it's true. I think the library is a little bit crazy right now. Um, right. I am trying to follow some more minimal minimalist <laughs> styles of organizing. So I have taken out some of the books and put them in bags and I'm right. going to rotate them so that it's not just like explosive <laughs> books everywhere. <laughs> but there are um, kind of like baskets of books in multiple parts of the house. So there's baskets mm -hmm. like next to like a chair in the playroom. There's a basket wow. near the, in the living room. There's they're kind of just everywhere because I feel like kids always pick it up when you don't want them to, you know, it's like, we'll say, mm. oh, it's time to work on this. And then they go over and pick up a book. <laughs> it's like, mm. Okay, fine. <laughs> You're reading. It's okay. But That's cool. And your kids love to read. Um, they've yeah. got their own special favorite books. Um, they do. I feel like they go through phases of, um, I'm trying to challenge them to read, um, you know, maybe just, some more challenging work because I feel like they love they're still they're still young they still love like um picture books they love they I mean they read chapter books but um uh, I think they appreciate the time of like so also someone reading to them but yeah I feel like with audiobooks is also a huge one that we use I'm um, a fan I'm a fan yes. <laughs> no judgments audiobooks are the best and they are the best yeah We've listened to so many, um, like in the car when we go places, or um, if we, anytime a kid is sick, like we'll just put one on. We've gone through lots of audiobooks that way <laughs> and just mm. sit on the couch and listen. Um, yeah, so books are a huge thing. But we do go yeah. to the library. We do pick a lot out of the library. Um, and obviously, you know, you can purchase books, but eventually it gets a little expensive. <laughs> so, right. Do you yeah. use wordless books? Uh, like is that something you kind of touch into like hit you know wordless picture books where it's just the images and kids get an opportunity to like I don't know tell the story through the pictures or let the imagination run wild yeah I I should I should utilize them more I did when they were younger where I had a, a mm. handful of ones that were um that were exactly just wordless and it was like we looked at the pictures and we kind of tried to talk about what they thought was happening mm. um but I do I feel like there's so much creativity that comes from there uh mm. I should implement implement it more <laughs> Man. well this is this is really cool because I'm just like it just sounds like I'm listening just as the teacher in a classroom it just so happens the classroom is in the home Aww. oh uh, this is really really cool <laughs> Is there some, ah, oh, actually, what I, as you were talking, I was thinking about that dreaded T word, testing, mm -hmm. you know, how, um, yeah, like, how do you, I mean, keep, re oh, it's like even, like, how do we, how do we keep records and, uh, in terms of just the year and things that, mm -hmm. uh, the different learning that your children have achieved um at a certain grade level what does that look like in terms of our homeschooling curriculum yeah um I think it's different for every homeschooling family I mean there's mm. many models of homeschooling there's some right. who, are, who do a model called unschooling where they have absolutely like the it's just student-led there's it's mm. the most unstructured and so 
I would say for maybe someone who's an, who's an unschooler, testing might be a less, um, maybe less talked about or less utilized. Uh, and then there's some who really do use testing more because they want to know, you know, where their students at. Um, I think for myself, I still, I, I love still looking at um, just what are standards for our state, for our kids, mm -hmm. like for their grade, because it kind of helps me not like we have to do all these things, but just helps me know like, oh, okay, it's good to know this is kind of what people are expecting this age. Um, so I normally will review that at the beginning of the year for all of their ages and just kind of like mentally note, this is what, you know, this is what people are, well, these are what other kids are learning. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as standards go, each state is in the US are, is different. So there's different homeschooling regulations. So in, so yeah, in Washington, uh, there, the only regulation is really you have to register your student by eight years old. And okay. then at the end of the year, once they are eight, you have to do either like a portfolio where you're mm -hmm. essentially keeping track of what you've taught them and, sub and have that together, or they need to take one state standardized test. So that's really the only testing that we do is at the end of the year. Um, and we only started it when our, our son was eight because they're not, they're not registered until then. So you, although you can continue teaching them previously, they aren't in the system as being a student, mm -hmm. uh, a homeschooling student. So we do do that once a year at the end of the year. Um, and the funny thing is actually, I realized when my son took it the first year, I was like preparing him. Like, I know how I felt when I was, you know, as a child, right. like, testing, it was like, you know, we ever, we were encouraged to eat like a bed of breakfast. And the whole day was like, centered around the test and it was like everyone was nervous and um so I told him and he he was like oh okay sounds good and then I realized like he has no framework of like the testing anxiety that many people face mm -hmm. uh so he got on the computer and it was online and he just like went through it and then he was done and he was like oh that was kind of fun <laughs> <laughs> like why was mom so stressed then yeah. I'm I'm pretty chill mom what's going on <laughs> he like had no idea and I was like right. I just was so happy though I was thinking like I'm if that was like the moment that made me just encourage me to continue on it was like yes there's no reason to be stressed you're just taking a test to see and you don't submit it which is the funny thing you don't submit it to the state or anything you just keep it as record um so really, it was just something we went over when he, he got the results. And it was like, you know, depending on where you rank, don't feel a certain way. You know, if it's under yeah. or over, it's just relative. It, it's not, it doesn't mean anything about you as a person. So it's pretty low key. <laughs> yeah. And then in terms of um, other homeschool educators, like is there a network that you can get support from, uh, you know, so that yes, mom is in the home. Um, yes, we're doing homeschooling, but then you can also... Um, connect with other parents who are perhaps in a similar homeschooling environment do you have that support I hope you're not doing this on your own out there and you know like being mom and educated like trying to balance everything yeah um, yeah there's there's different support networks so there's like um, homeschooling co-ops which are pretty common and they are essentially like once a, a lot of times they're like once or twice a week and they are groups that are made up of people who for maybe have similar values, whether it's like religious or a certain kind of focus. Um, and then you all go together and like, it's often led by other homeschooling parents, like the, the classes are instructed by them. Um, to be honest, I've never joined one because <laughs> I, mm -hmm. um, it was just always felt like more work than I could put in at the time. Um, just because we've had kids there was always a baby, you know, so it was like yeah. trying to gather everyone and go somewhere. And it was like, this is defeating the purpose of us just relaxing and doing it at our own time. Um, but in the meantime, I've, yes, definitely connected with other homeschoolers where we um, share what's going on or we'll share material. Um, I used to have a good friend that lived next door to us and she used to come over and teach a class to the kids and I would swap and teach one of a, kind of like a, a class being like you know a 30 minute thing mm -hmm. lesson or whatever um but she has moved across the country now but we did mm -hmm. like we have we've done lessons on zoom together just like trying to connect and help you know share our frustrations and share our wins with each other so like you said it is important because I feel like it can feel isolating if you have no one to share um mm -hmm. and you know, work through some of the hard parts about.
about it with. Mm. I'm glad. I'm glad you have, you know, forms of just you've got access to that. I guess I'm glad you've got access to support. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because as as you're sharing, I'm like, man, it must get lonely sometimes in terms of like, uh, you know, naturally you're the educator in the mm -hmm. home, but just like. You know, sometimes you probably just need to disconnect and just have a moment, but it's good that you have resources and people available to you. So that's, yeah, that's encouraging. Yeah. Man, um, I wanted to ask about the blogging, your blogging, your experience, the journey thus far. How many years has, has Inventus Learning uh, been running? Well, how many years have you been blogging now? Yeah, so um, I started it in... I think the blog technically started in 2020, so only three years. Mm. So it hasn't been super long. Um, I've done a lot of blogging for other people previously, just right. writing blog articles. And so I was like, I'm going to just do my own. Um, so, yeah, it's been a journey. I also blog. I still blog um, on behalf of someone else for a different site, unrelated. Uh, and so I feel like it's a constant battle of, like, doing work there versus my own personal work. Um, mm. But it has been, yeah, it's been great. It's been, I think, just trying to figure out where I'm going, who's my audience, mm -hmm. um, what's most helpful to share. Because um, I feel like I said, you know, a homeschooling experience is so individual for each family right. for so many different reasons. I mean, even our schedule, there's many families, you know, like single moms or um, some who work all day and then they homeschool at night. And so I feel like, there isn't a one model that, that fits everybody. So trying to figure out what's most helpful to share. Mm. Are there other Pacific Island parents uh, that, you know, you and your husband have met who are also homeschooling or at least maybe trying to head into homeschooling? Is there a network like that out there? Oh, that's a good question. I actually, I don't know a ton. Um, mm. I've had people ask and, and say like, we're considering it or if their kids are younger. Um, you know, we're thinking about it, like, and we've talked in that form. But yeah, there isn't a huge community. Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish there was mm -hmm. more so that we could really connect. Um, I have, yeah, uh, um, there is a family that's, that's a neighbor also who um, are thinking about going that direction. So our kids, oftentimes, they, they play together as another Pacific Island family. But mm -hmm. Yeah, it, the network isn't huge, that I know of at least. Hmm. I was wondering about um, your children, uh, just uh, going back to your cultural roots, uh, Tongan, your husband, Nguyen, Samoan, uh, you know, and then your kids. Uh, with your young family, how are they able to, I mean, how do you connect with those different layers of their um, identity and, and cultural roots growing up in the U.S.? Oh, that is living a, in the US <laughs> a complicated but a really great question um I think I'm still trying to figure it out I I feel like it's a constant struggle of like um even you know where we live like trying to help them see themselves in the community around them and um, there isn't a ton of other Pacific Islanders like right near us specifically except actually our one neighbor who's right next door in um, and so that I was like, oh, thank you that they're there. <laughs> like other kids who relate in, on so many other levels, we don't have to discuss. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, yeah, we it's a, a constant battle of trying to figure out like what part do we highlight? I think right. we are just doing our best to to highlight. I mean, on my side, I feel like I share the Tongan side with them. Um, mm -hmm. They see their grandma probably the most out of all of their closer, you know, extended relatives. Um, and then their cousins, too, um, who are also Tongan. Um, I think it helps them to see themselves, you know, in their community around them. But trying our best to connect them, um, teach them the culture, teach them the language, teach them mm. all the things. But I feel like sometimes it feels like a lot between the three um, different cultures, like three different Pacific Island cultures. Um, my husband's parents spoke Samoan, and then his grandpa was from UA and so it's mm. like we're always like trying to remind them like there is this part of you but as relatives have passed I think it's like trying to grasp for like connection and make sure mm. that they haven't lost you know touch with some sides but I feel like sometimes it's imbalanced um just naturally maybe it's an ongoing 
yes. ongoing learning process. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I through books is a huge part. I mean, we definitely prioritize, you know, getting books from Pacific Island mm. authors and, and reading. I, I mean, I think, you know, obviously through stories, it's mm. such a beautiful way to share um, deeper values and nuances of culture. Um, sometimes if you're, they're not seeing it in front of them every day that they can learn through, through books. But uh, like I said, travel is one of our things that we really yes. want them to experience. So the plans of traveling to visit family and, um, you know, see their, our, our family's roots is really important. Mm. Uh, you mentioned books just now, and I was wondering, have you ever thought about, I know you're busy. I know you're a busy <laughs> mom educator. Um, have you ever thought about writing picture books or writing children's books? Yes, actually I have. It was, it's been one okay. of my things that I have okay. wanted to do for a really long time. I've had kind of like the story of a couple books but I have mm. never published them. I have one, yes, that I'm working on with an illustrator right now. So I'm hoping that it will come out <laughs> eventually soon. I'm excited. Let me know. I can put you on blast and Aww. promote you through my bookstagram account. That's what we're here for. Thank and this you. is also why you're here on the show. Like not only just share this important um, homeschooling education that you're providing for your kids, but, you know, potential <laughs> author here. Oh. Yeah, stay stay you know stay connected um uh, you know check the bio for how you can connect with elizabeth um following her journey uh for anyone who's listening who's interested in homeschooling or just connecting to ask questions to get some guidance to get some advice check the bio i'll have all her i'll have the inventus learning uh links in there for you to click on so check it out fam seriously and stay stay posted I, 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 we, we, we could be dropping a book later later <laughs> like months down the line so I'm it's really cool to hear that because I feel like I'm listening to it I'm like man it would be so cool for you to like you know write stories and and be able to share mm -hmm. that and you know that's what we're here for is to uplift and encourage and share give flowers to <laughs> people like yourselves who are not you know not you who are just doing the mahi doing the work and not looking for acknowledgement but we're here to give you your flowers elizabeth yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> um social media you know so you know you have a website um for inventus learning you are blogging your journey uh you are online how do you yeah is it hard to kind of like decide okay this is what I want to put out there this is I don't want to do too much or I want to focus man how do you navigate social media spaces and creating those boundaries yeah that's a good question I I'm I'm I feel like this is my answer to everything I'm still trying to figure it out yeah, yeah. um I as far as social media goes I I love to post about just like our outings our fun activities mm -hmm. our things because the work in the like our seated work where we're sitting down um I feel like it's less you know everyone does it differently the curriculum I use is um I like it but I also feel like it's specific to every person so mm. um instead of recommending and posting about like this is a curriculum there might be a couple actually some curriculum that I would say like I think everyone could you know benefit from but instead of focusing on that I'm I just try to focus on learning out in the community and mm. maybe give ideas of ways that people can learn from, you know, outside of the home or the classroom uh, to help enrich their experience. So I think that's my, it's also the part that I'm most passionate about. So I think that's why I just tend to focus on that um, posting wise. Um, but yes, then there goes with all the other parts about social media of like, you know, your kids and how much do you mm. show of them and, Still trying to figure out. <laughs> Still trying yeah. to figure that out. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's cool to hear your journey and and the things you've shared thus far because it's honestly making me. I'm just sitting here going, well, this is part of being a teacher, right? You're the you're a lifelong learner. Absolutely. It's, your experiences are forever evolving. Your students happen to be your children. They are learning and evolving as learners as well. So as every time you say, oh, I'm I'm still trying to figure that out, but that's. <laughs> That's okay. Like I'm listening and going, yeah, no, I get it. Like as educators, you want to be saying that mm -hmm. as soon as you're like 
oh no i've got this i've got i've sorted it I'm, i've got this i yeah. am so, <laughs> like you've you're saying that you stop and but it's not a bad thing that you keep saying stop beating yourself up about it i love it because it's like yeah but that's part of what being a lifelong learner is is that you're just acknowledging yeah there's always room yeah to be to wrong, <laughs> to, to be, be wrong. wrong. Yeah. I try to tell them that I'm like, you guys, yes. like, this is what I think now, and this is, you know, what I think is important. Or um, even with history, I feel like, you know, when you share things, I'm like, this is one person's view, and this is mm. another person's view on the same, the same historical event, you know. But right, right. there's like one could be true, and the other one could also be true. So I feel mm. like the idea of just being open to being wrong too <laughs> yeah well again yes we agree to disagree no one is perfect but it's that what it like you know it's just saying I know there's room for improvement and it's really just showing a willingness to be like yeah I know yeah I can be wrong here but let's get back up and continue uh, mm -hmm. let's try so and I think that as well hearing your story this far is like you're your children don't realize it now probably like all of us we have these life lessons that our parents continuously taught us when we were younger <laughs> and only as adults we go oh that was a life lesson I got it now yeah. <laughs> years so later I, okay got you mom I get you loud and clear I'm sorry it just took me years later yeah. to figure out. And, and it's cool to hear these elements of your journey or these aspects of your journey because I'm just like man your kids years from now are gonna go oh yeah mom yeah you were a cool parent too we, we get you we get you <laughs> that's my hope yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering uh, what has been a highlight I mean, you said you love to travel you love to go outside of the walls of the house you love to like education outdoors what has been one of the really cool trips or just a cool activity that you have done with your kids and I'm sure you've got a whole list but you got to choose one oh, fun. <laughs> okay um <clears throat> Gosh, I would say we only had two kids at a time. I was pregnant with our third one, but um, me and my husband had always said like around Christmas time, instead of giving each other gifts, if we find cheap tickets somewhere, let's just, <laughs> that will be Christmas. So mm -hmm. one year it was, um, I think it was right before Christmas. We just, I, I like follow all these travel you know, websites to tell me what the cheapest deal is. So we found some tickets to Spain. And so I was like, what do you think? I like, wow. I remember calling him at work and he was like, that's like a crazy deal. I mean, it was like the flight, the, the cost of like flying to LA from Seattle. It was so incredibly cheap. Wow. So um, he's like, let's do it. So I remember it was like the same ticket to the same price to Madrid and also to Barcelona. So I'm like Googling, like, what is the most kid friendly, like Barcelona or Madrid? I mean, this is a research. It was like so uneducated, you know, like, and I was like, okay, they say Barcelona. Okay, we booked it. Wow. So, I mean, I was like six months pregnant with our third baby and we just, we had no prior experience. I mean, we did right. ask obviously people who were from Spain or from who had traveled there, um, but it's still one of my favorite memories because we mm. didn't. I mean, I was intimidated because I, I took a lot of years of Spanish, but I mean, conversational, getting to a place of conversation is obviously a different experience where you're immersed in a culture and everyone's talking faster than you expect. Mm -hmm. um, but it was one of my favorite memories because we just, we just like winged it and we went and, um, and the kids had such, they, they just had such good memories. And I, I think about it, I'm like, I'm, we need to do more of that, you know, where it's like, we, we, might, we might not have all of the details planned out, we might feel a little bit uneasy, because we don't know everything. But I mean, it's just as much of a learning experience, you know, for them as it was for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love how you said, oh, we winged it. Like, yeah, we winged it. But that is part of the adventure. Yeah, for sure. Right. It was a, I, so I truly, I'm one of those. I am all about the adventure. Yes, do I get lost? Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm just like, it's part of the adventure. Like, you get there eventually to your destination. I mean, obviously, like Barcelona. But I'm just talking like general yeah. travel here, right? But that is so dope. Was, I love yeah. that. <laughs> That's wow. my motto for hopefully for life. I'm like, we should just, yes. if we could do that every every year or, I mean, you know. But you know what, why not? why not? Like, yeah. what, you know, why can't we say that? Like, I, man, this is such a refreshing perspective on classroom learning, which just happens to be in the home. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I love this. I am learning a lot from the self-care. I ask this question and people are like, don't ask the 
question. I struggle with it. But yes, you know, with a lot going on, on some days, not all days, um, mm -hmm. homeschooling, how do you take care of your health um, so that you can turn up for your family as mum? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, I mean, you know, mum, of course, always the educator, but Elizabeth, mom. the mum. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think self-care is really important to me. I don't know if I ever verbalize that. Like, I don't know if I would ever tell anyone that, but I think there's little things that I try to do to help me mentally be, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in a good mindset because it can be a lot, you know, when you're, you're, I mean, I'm, I'm working part-time from home. I like with my other writing um, work and then inventus learning and then the kids and then mom. And then it's like, ah, oh, it feels crazy sometimes. Um, but I do a little, I mean, some of them are just very little. So one of the biggest things is I am really huge on our, what we eat. Um, mm. because I feel like it either puts us in a good mood or in a bad mood, it gives us energy or it doesn't, you know? So, um, I try, I focus a lot on, on eating like whole meals that are just mainly always made from home. So the kids are always like, Oh, we never go out to eat. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sorry guys. You know, I mean, it's obviously more affordable to eat at home, but it's also mm. like, I know what I'm putting in the food, you know, I can manage it better and I know mm. <clears throat> your health, what you, what's going in your body. So. I think eating a diet is a huge thing for my mental health and for self care um, of the whole family too. Um, and then uh, I would say moving, like just moving my body. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be, I do go to the gym in the morning cause it is like a time, actually it's like my time where I can listen to my audiobooks quietly by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of like a selfish time for just getting in books. Um, but at, in the daytime, um, I normally make the kids go on a walk. We normally go on a walk every day. Um, and it's like either in the middle of school or at the end of school. And uh, I feel like their mood towards it has changed over time. So when they were little, it was like, yes. And now it's like, <laughs> you know, like grumbling. And I'm like, but I, I do, I, like, I always tell them, I'm like, I hope one day when you are 80 years old, you continue to walk every single day. You know, it will be good for you to enjoy it. They're probably so annoyed. I'm like, look at the people who are healthy. They were just walking, you know? <laughs> Years um, from now, they're going to look back and go, we get it, mom. We I get know. it. We get why you did that. Right now, they're just going to complain and complain. Let them complain. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, just look at look at the nature when we're walking. But it is partially for them to set the, I want them to have the habit of like, it is a really good way to de-stress. Like when you're stressed mm. out or you feel overwhelmed. Um and it's also, I always tell them, I'm like, guys, this is actually for me. Like the walk that we're doing, it's so I don't go crazy, you know? So right. I'm, I'm like in a better mood. Um, so I think a lot of self-care, I feel like I'm pretty simple in other ways. Like I don't mm. do a whole lot other than if you give me outside, I'm happy and I feel mm. alive and I feel like less, you know, stressed. I feel like my nerves are like balanced. So I think self-care is really like diet and moving ideally outside moving <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah I try to do it for myself and then I I want my kids to be able to be part of it so even like with with food like you know we I try to make sure that they're helping me make meals together so mm -hmm. they learn how to cook and they also learn how um they learn the process of like where food comes from what it looks like we mm -hmm. we do in the summertime we we go to a farm every week and we pick up food from there Wow! Uh, so that we can, I'm like, this is how food grows and look like, you know, we don't have some fruit that are not mm. growing during the season. So it's, I'm just trying to teach them the bigger picture of like mm. health, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> but mm. you know, they get big and they make their own choices, but hopefully they will come back to things that they learned when they were little. You know, you've been talking a lot, um, or sharing a lot about these teachable moments, you know, throughout this journey. And I was wondering if there is something that you can think about, you know, when we talk about teachable moments, but from your kids, like what's something that they have taught you? Because mm -hmm. clearly you're the educator and mom <laughs> and the adult, but, you know, teachable moments, what's something that they've taught you and you and made you go, oh, <laughs> 
Oh, oh I have, I, yes, you're definitely one of mine. Like, what is, and it doesn't have to be huge, but what is something that you can, you know, reflect and go, wow, that was definitely a teachable moment. They taught me something as mm -hmm. the adult. I think they honestly, I think they teach me more than I teach them. I mean, I think I am always realizing things about myself, um, mm. whether they're actually telling me or it's just like I see it reflected in them mm. from me. And I'm like, if it's not something that I love, it's like, oh, <laughs> that was for me. <laughs> <laughs> I or, or like sometimes I even feel like, you know, kids repeat things that you say or phrases or how they respond mm. to stressful situations. Um I've seen that mirrored in them and it helps me mm -hmm. see like I don't like that I don't like that I respond in this way um, and they're learning it and they're just repeating it you know um, mm -hmm. I I feel like um, I was telling them the other day oh they were response one of the kids did something and the other siblings were like kind of like shouting at the other one like hey you know why are you doing that and I was like guys leave them alone you know like you mind your own business just let them you don't need to be a parent like it's not right. your job but then <laughs> I was thinking like I like heard their voices and their response and maybe even the tone and I was like oh that's me they're just you're like I need to fix my tone I need yeah. to work on my tone <laughs> and I was like oh so I was like kind of mad at them but I was like oh it's my fault you know like I, I know where they got it from Teachable moment, um, teachable, teachable moment. moment. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like the biggest things, I mean, they do, they will come to me and say like, um, we try to do like, you know, dates with our kids, like individually, like we'll take them out one at a time. And we, me and my husband will flop, like flip flop months. So like this month will be my month with each of the kids and then the next month will be his. Mm -hmm. And then we just like go and do something with one of them by themselves. But a lot of time during that time, we're just like asking them like, how are you doing how like are there things that I always ask like are there things that I can work on you know or like that mm -hmm. you feel like you need to talk to me about like it's open book you know um and I feel like they've they've shared really powerful things that have sometimes been hard for me to hear like you know we feel like you you know maybe just like talk and don't listen when we're like trying mm -hmm. to explain a story or and it's like, okay, <laughs> it's like, mm. <laughs> but I mean, it's humbling, you know, and I want them to feel, I mean, yes, I'm their parent and I want them to have respect and know, you know, that they're a child and I'm a parent, of course, but I also feel like I want them to have the experience of sharing their feedback and emotions and, and I want them to talk to me about anything. So I'm like, tell me the hard things, you know, if it fits about me. Um, mm. or something that we can work on as a family like what can we do differently to like you know make make better moments like mm. I maybe I, I I always like channel my mom's voice when I sometimes in frustration I'll, I'll hear I'll be like you guys you know we're not promised tomorrow you know we <laughs> we mm. don't have it every day is not given so like let's enjoy it let's make make the best we can you know when we have the time because mm. we won't always be together in the way that we're together right now I love that. <sighs> Inspirational stuff. You know, I was thinking about, uh, well, your oldest son, uh, does he participate in like team sports? What I mean is like a club. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like local club sports since he's, you know, not at a school technically, but to to kind of like, that's also part of life schools, you know, is learning to be part of a team mm -hmm. yeah no they they've all done sports except mm. my youngest one um they have local um they've done football and oh. uh they did taekwondo and a wow. couple other things um tennis just they've tried different sports uh mm. in the community yeah and it's a great time for them to meet other kids who are from different schools have a different instructor in their life, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a different person coaching them. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, my oldest one, he actually plays with um, his cousin's school team. They, they are a private school and they, a, a lot cool. of, um, actually the way it's structured here is if you are homeschooled, you can play with your local public school and any of their school oh. teams. So we, ha we haven't done that yet, uh, mainly just because his cousin had um, an opening and they, mm. I was like, what, well, it'll be more time with family and some right, of right. kids, so. But yeah, they definitely, they love sports. And so they're always looking for the next season. <laughs> what mm. are they going to play next? But I yeah. love that. Um, do you have any book recommendations? Any book that you want to plug? Something, that, a favorite that you like to share with your own kids? 
Ooh, Ooh, I... oh, mom, mom reading mom reading is okay yeah. read something that you love to read <laughs> i'm trying to think I, I i think i have like 10 books that are open right now that, <laughs> that i'm reading okay. um i i think from a homeschooling or educator side i love this book called um raising critical readers or mm. uh, sorry, raising critical thinkers um by julie bogart and she um was a homeschooler and now she's just kind of an educator in general to a, a wider population. Her kids are grown, um, but she's written a, a handful of books. Um, the idea of, I mean, it's, it has the thread of homeschooling through it, but anyone could take a lot of takeaways from it. Um, of the idea of raising kids who are asking questions and are thinking critically. And, and that one has been kind of like a pillar as far as my educational side. Um, I, I always tend to read nonfiction. I, mm. I don't know what it is. I just, like give me all the books that tell me what to how to improve, what to do next. Mm. So I love like books like Atomic Habits or Deep Work, things that help me in areas that are not naturally strong <laughs> for mm. me. Um, I also I, I do like nonfiction though. I feel like I mean sorry, I do like fiction. Um, I'm trying to force myself to just enjoy an easy story or like a story yeah. that takes me away instead of being such a concrete thinker. I think that's my tendency. Um, mm. I love all of Khalid Hussaini's books. So like a thousand splendid sons, mm. one of my favorites. I felt like I was, I spent some time in the middle East. So it just felt like I was like so drawn to the book itself. Um, and some other fun books. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I'm all over the board. I love reading books from authors from every part of the world. Mm. Um, there's one by Elizabeth Acevedo with, I guess with the fire on high. Um, yes. It might be like that. Yes. I, I love, love her. I, oh, I, I'm such a fan yes. of hers. Seriously. I mean, I know it's like kind of like a YA book, but I'm like, mm. <laughs> I mean, why can't we not read them? You know, <laughs> yeah, like how, and you know, I like how you just said before, you know, sometimes you just need to just the easy read, you just, just to pull you away from the teacher, the critical thinking, the person that you are, the teacher mode, the educator mode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get I, it. I mean, I'm, oops, I'm in the um, middle of the covenant of water right now. I think I, mm. I don't remember if you had read, recommended it or someone else had recommended it, but that's another one that I'm like, I I really have appreciated his um, writing style and it kind of just drifts you off to another land. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, do you think you will ever go back to like a school teaching job in a building, in a concrete world? <laughs> dramatic, dramatic. <laughs> I know. Do you think you could ever go back to that? Do you imagine that you could, or is it, you know, this journey has just opened up so many new doors to what education can look like? That's a good question. My dad asks me this all the time. <laughs> He's like, oh, the, hey, dad. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, I, I am teaching. <laughs> you are. Uh, you know? I, I, I actually, when I stopped teaching, I ended up getting, um, here to continue your education or your license it if you're not going to be active it eventually cuts off so oh. I transitioned and got um, a sub license which is good indefinitely so I could sub and then mm. it's an easier transition to go back into the classroom from there so that's my small window out is like if yeah. I want to go sub I can do that um, but I don't know honestly I feel like the longer I'm doing this the more mm. things that have opened up about like Maybe, maybe even like more of an entrepreneurial spirit of like, mm. I could, I could create something like this, or I could do something that could, you know, help uh, this group of people do this. So I think that's really a huge part of my heart is like, um, creating and trying new things. Mm. Um, so I feel like the longer I'm homeschooling, the smaller the, the brick and mortar classroom is looking. But I the won't brick say and water yeah. classroom. I like the, the brick and water classroom potential episode title right there. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's getting smaller. But I will. I I think it will never close because I. Right. I mean, I would never trade anything for the experiences that I had in the classroom and the students that I got to ha be with. Mm. And I think about them still. You know, I'm like I wonder where they are. How are they doing? And mm. so, yeah. 
<laughs> and then Inventors Learning, uh, how would you like to see that grow? How would you like to see, yeah, your company grow um, over the next few years? Yeah. Uh, I think um, I would love for it to be a place. I'm in the process of, like, creating some different physical products and things that I could have on there that could be useful for educators, um, you know, either at home or in the classroom. So I would love to have like that aspect as part of the site, just tools that people can access. Um, but another one that I started and I haven't done, actually you're making me think about it, was that um, I loved, I had done a couple interviews with just different people on different subjects in the past. And I loved to be able to highlight other people's voices. Um, mm -hmm. in the educational community, um, just people working with children in general, like their angles on things. So I would love to still kind of pick that up again and have a space for inventive learning to be not just my voice, you know, I mean, I'm just one of so many. So to be able to share other people's voices and have them share their expertise. Um, mm. This is reminding me of it right here. <laughs> like, it's so great to hear you know, from someone else. That's really cool. Um, oh my goodness, Elizabeth. I, I, you know, as we start to wrap up, there personally there's been so many takeaways from Outsala Noir today. I, I'm like my face is like excited, excited, oh. fangirl. I, I do, I do love the work that you do, um, and I, it's just you're bringing such a different perspective, um, but still that teaching spirit, right? That educator spirit and. It's, it's such a cool vibe that I'm getting from you. Um, I'm excited for Inventus Learning. I am excited to see how you grow uh, your company over the next few years and just to continue to follow your journey. Um, yeah, I'm still, like, stuck on Barcelona. But that, let, oh. let, that's, a whole, that's another <laughs> chapter. That's when you come back to share about your, um, <clears throat> your book. Okay. But I just, before I let you go, I really have to say thank you so much for just being open uh, to sharing, uh, to bringing this perspective um, of education, of homeschooling education uh, onto the show. Like, as soon as I had kind of, like, been following and I was like, I need to get you on here. I'd first of all need to build the courage to ask. <laughs> Oh, and no. then get you on the show to share it because it's definitely a journey and a story that we have not heard but you know this is what the Reds Rosa podcast is about is not just highlighting uh, uh, highlighting many many amazing talented uh Pacifica BIPOC folks who are out there just you know championing um others and just doing the mahi um and you're one of those people thank you for the inspiration today yeah i just yeah thank you wishing you and your family all the best just keep striving to be the best you uh for your family and i just look forward to continuing to follow your journey i want to hand it over to you to just you know wrap up our show with some final gems uh, some no. more wisdom. <laughs> yes um yeah over no. to you well, in response, thank you. Thank you so much. Like, I really am honored to be in this space with you and to just share. I felt the exact same way. It was like, uh, my email box is always just, you know, like boring emails. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt, I feel and felt so honored that you would even ask me to be here with you. Um, I have loved listening to your other um, podcast interviews, and I always feel like everyone has such inspirational stories. So to just be on the same platform. It means a lot. Um, and even our conversation, I I love the freeness to just go back and forth. Um, and for you to provide the space for other people is a giving. It, it says so much about you. It, it's a generous thing to do. <laughs> it's time, you know, and I know you are not busy. Yes, <laughs> you are teaching and then doing this whole platform here. So Thank you again. Um, I'm excited to share. Yes, hopefully any new progresses that come in the future, I will keep you updated. But Let me know. This is, um, I'm about there. I'll put you on blast. And um, final quote for the day. I mean, I'm still stuck on the brick and mortar classroom. I'm loving that. <laughs> but let's, let's bring it back to Elizabeth. Final word. <laughs> oh, final word. I don't know. Final, quote, final inspirational moment. 
Uh, okay, final intuition moment. I like <laughs> we ha we have opportunity to learn every day. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what age we are, all around us. Um, I think it just requires being curious, asking questions. There's so much to learn, um, and it enriches our life. You know, so so start <laughs> so so start asking questions start looking around i mean life is to be enjoyed <laughs>